If you put your life in his hand, he will take you through. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Please feel free to sing along and dance with me as we worship today. Praise the Lord. We serve an awesome God, amen? Come on, let's put our hands together. We worship you, Lord. We give him praise for he's a good savior. He's a good Lord. He's the redeemer. He's a master. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You don't have to worry. And don't you be your friend. Joy comes in the morning. Troubles they won't last no ways. For there's a friend in Jesus. Woo! Who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken. Just lift your hands and say. Oh I know that. No matter, no matter what, make come my 
can make it, no matter what may come your way, your life is in his hands. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Better than the original. <laughs> Nobody could do it like Reverend Camille. Thank you, Reverend Camille. And what a wonderful song for this morning. No matter what may come, so we, our life is in his hands. The Bible says that he came to give life and to give life more abundantly. Hallelujah. Well, we have worshipped God in many ways this morning. We've reached that point in time in the service where we are getting ready to hear from the word of God. Jesus was very, very clear. Very clear. He spoke about the words. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. This morning we are going to be, we are going to be blessed by the word of God. I want to invite you to stand this morning. Let's receive Reverend Shari, our first lady. She's coming to minister the word of the Lord unto us. Put your hands together for her. Praise God. Thank you for the wonderful welcome this morning. Good morning, everybody. You may have your seats. I greet you in the very precious and divine name of Jesus. A special good morning to our bishop. Bishop, thank you for the opportunity to stand behind this pulpit this morning to deliver the beautiful words of life unto us. And a special welcome to all you guests. We are so happy that you are with us. Amen. We have some very important people Hi, people in our community, and we are thankful that you have chosen to be here with us, worshiping and praising the Lord. Amen. We just want to go into the Word of God. I want to invite you to turn to Exodus chapter 3, and we'll be reading verse 14. You know, in this dark and dreadful world that we are living in, it's no secret when we all look around we can see that something is definitely wrong. There is a definite shift. There's a definite change in the world. And the change is not for the better, but the change is for the worst. And if you would take time to analyze exactly what is happening, brethren, you will come up with the answer that we need a savior. We need a deliverer. We need someone to come in and assist us. We need someone to help. Amen. And, you know, this reminded me of a portion of um, scriptures where Moses was called to deliver the children of Israel out of the bondage of Satan, the bondage of the enemy in the land of Egypt. And when Moses was assigned to deliver these children out of, it, out of Egypt, he asked God, he said, God, tell me, who am I supposed to say I am? Who am I supposed to say sent me here? And I want you to look at what God is saying in his word. Amen. And God replies in Exodus 3, he said, Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus saith thou unto the children of Israel, I am had sent me unto you. And that would have given Moses such confidence going into a dark place like that, knowing that the great I am was standing with him. The great I am was going to do a great work through his life today. Friends, you see, Satan tries to discourage us. Yes, he does. Every second of the day, every minute of the day, there is an evil one that tries to tell you that things are so terrible. Or he tries to tell you that all is well. While you're going down a way of destruction, he lies to you and he says, it's good, man. You go and he blinds your eyes because he uses family situation family issues, he uses financial issues, employment issues, 
any and everything that this wicked one can use to incapacitate you, he will use. Amen? He will. And if left up to us, if left up to our own devices, if left up to our own wisdom, if left up to our own understanding, if left up... You want to help with the baby? No, it be good? All right. If left up to our own strategies, he will destroy us. Because the Bible tells us, it's very clear in the scriptures. He said, but the thief comes what? For what? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. And that's exactly what that wicked one is doing. He's stealing your joy. He's stealing your peace. He's stealing anything that he can from you because he does not want you to prosper. So you see, my friend, it brings us to the point that without someone, not something, because a lot of systems are being improved, you know. A lot of things are coming, but what is it helping? No, you might see a little change here and there, but the real issue is not being addressed. So you see, without someone to correct our course, we will crash. No two ways about it. No two ways about it. I'm very bold in what I'm saying this morning because I know it is truth. Without someone to direct our parts, we will be lost. Without someone to see us through the storms, and we are all going through something. You'll get the maxi and you hear the conversation. People are going through stuff. Some more than others. But every single individual upon planet Earth can see that there is something that they are dealing with. And brethren, when we go through the storm, we will be battered if there's not someone to help us. The waves will batter us and we will be wrecked. But I'm happy. I am glad to report today that there is someone. Hallelujah. And his name is Jesus. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. There is nothing too hard for him to do. He said it. He said, is there? He asked the question. You don't know who you're dealing with. I am the great creator. Is there anything too hard for me to do? Is there? Amen. There is nothing that this Jesus cannot handle. Those of you that know Jesus, you know who he is. And you know what and who you mean to him. And that's why you can stand with confidence. Even though you are going through these things that I mentioned before, you can say with confidence, just as Moses did, that my God is the way maker. Because he makes a way, brethren, where there seem to be none. And so many times in our lives, we cannot see a glimmer of light. But even in that darkness, I remember preparing uh, a stronger by the minute. Uh, and even in that darkness, um, if we allow our eyes to climatize to that darkness uh, and we really, really look, uh, we would see that even in that darkness, my brother, there is Jesus the light. Uh, and he's shining his light uh, upon that dark part. Uh, and he is able to bring us through. Uh, he is the answer to our every need. The Bible tells us that if God be for us, then who can be against us? Who could be against God? Now it looks like God losing it. It looks like that. Let's be real. It looks like that because of the gross darkness that presently exists. And that's because 
we, the creation of the Lord, is not allowing him to do what he has to do. And that is why gross darkness is taking over. But don't fool your fat. I have plenty, so I am full in mine. But don't fool your fat. Our God is in control. He sees everything. He knows everything. And he's still in control. He's still the creator. He's still the great I am. He's still the burden bearer. And he's still there with his arms wide open waiting for you. When you think about Jesus... Think of a parent, right? And this child that you have is notorious, is wicked, always getting into problems. Gosh, there are feelings of animosity that will come toward this child. Don't tell me no. If you say no, you lie. Because there is no parent here that enjoys a disobedient child. There is no parent here that finds all the love in your heart when your child is on the wrong path. You kind of start to resent. You kind of start to say, look, what's going on with you? And if ye come, ye go, and the same thing, guess what is going to happen? That love is going to be diminished. The care that you have, you're going to give up because that's just how we are. But not with the creator. Not with God. You can be as bad as you can. That love never fails. It never fails. That love and that care that I stand in confidence saying that man, Jesus does not ever give up on any one of us uh, because true to his purpose uh, he came that we might have life uh, not just life uh, but have it more abundantly uh, that was his mission uh, for stepping down from glory uh, and coming to earth uh, that was all that was on his mind uh, redeeming every single one of you uh, bringing you back from the clutches uh, of the evil ones so that love uh, never disappear and as Moses learned that day we ought to remember today also that the same I am that sent Moses to deliver the children of Israel out of bondage. Oh, hallelujah. That same great I am sent his only begotten son. You're catching on and I'm loving it. He sent his only son to deliver us and catch this. He is the only one who can do it. There is no other one and there is no other way. It's only through Jesus. Get your Bibles out. We're going to look at a couple of scriptures that will confirm what I'm saying. In the interest of time, I'm going to continue to read, but I need you to find it to see it. First Corinthians 8 and 6 says, But to us there is but one God. The Father of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus, by whom are all things, and we by him. Any more scriptures you need clearer than that? And I read it in the perfect English so you can understand. There is only one Jesus, one Ephesians 4 and 6, and then we look at Philippians 4, 13. Ephesians 4 and 6 says, One God and Father of all, who is above all, and, O oh Lord, and through all, and in you all. Any more scripture? We have some more. Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things. Through whom? Oh, Jesus. You see, it's only through Jesus. I can do all things through Christ Jesus, which strengthened me. Let's go again. Ephesians 3 and 20. 
Now unto him that is able, oh, hallelujah, to do exceedingly abundantly. I so wish we could have that scripture so you can, those of you that don't have your Bible, you can see I'm quoting it from the Bible. Let me read it again. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that Yes, amen. He can be anything you want him to be as much as you allow it to work in you. So John got the message directly from Jesus. You know what I love to be in this time? You know, I would love to be like John. John 15 and 5. Jesus speaking. John was present. Hear what Jesus is saying. I am the vine. You are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For with, oh yeah, for without me, Jesus is speaking, for without me, you can do nothing. And let's look at First John 4 and 4. You are of God, little children. And you have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So, so far we saw Moses got it. We saw John got it. Paul writing to us. It appears he got it too. Did you get it yet? Did you get it this morning? I, friends, I surely hope you did. God sent Jesus, the great deliverer, to deliver you. God, the great I am, he sent Jesus, the healer, to heal you. God, the great I am, sent Jesus, the protector, to protect you. He sent Jesus, who is the prince of peace, to bring the peace that is so needed in our lives today. He sent Jesus the comforter to comfort us in our moments of grief and discouragement. But most importantly, now I love all that Jesus is. Eh? I love that he's our healer, he's our deliverer, he's our protector, he's the prince of peace, he's the comforter. But most importantly, my friends, the great I am sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to redeem every single one of us from the curse of sin. He sent Jesus to buy us back. Because you see, way back when our four parents, Adam and Eve, did the wrong and disobeyed God, the entire human race was sold out to the enemy. We gave in to Satan because that was the choice that was made. And you know what they say? Peter, pay for Paul. And Paul paying for everybody. Poor Paul. And it's just like us. We, it's, 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 it has come down to us. We were not with God anymore. We were sold out. But that was not the purpose that our God created us. He created us to have communion. He created us to have fellowship. He, com he created us to, to have a good relationship with us. But sin, my friends, separates us from a holy God. Someone had to come. And that someone had to be pleasing and acceptable only unto a holy God. You know, many have come, you know, and many have tried, and many have failed. And many are going to come again, the Bible tells us, and they're going to come in the name of the Lord Jesus, and they're going to fail because they are not Jesus. They are not Jesus. Jesus came for himself, people. He didn't have anybody representing him. And I mean, we are representative of Christ. Eh? We are. But I'm telling you that Jesus came for himself. And he did what he had to do for all of us. What a God. It's for every one of us done. 
Every single one of us, Jesus came and he died for us. How could we not say yes to a God like that? That left all the splendor of heaven, gave up everything. And you know what they did to our Lord. All of you look at the Good Friday stories on television and you hear it from school. So you know the story. You don't have to go into it. But he suffered all of that because he truly loved us. And he had one thing on his mind, one person, and that was you. Oh, isn't that amazing? He was seeing you, Sister Pam. Beautiful ladies in the front here, he was seeing you way back then. And he loved you. And he wanted to take you back from Satan. He sent Jesus the way maker. And he made the way of escape for us. So we are no longer doomed. No, hey, that's wonderful, all year. We are no longer doomed. We no longer have our heads bowed down because we have sinned and done wrong. God, he is the lifter up of our head. Hallelujah. Through Jesus Christ, through the finished work of Jesus Christ. So what it is that you need, Jesus can meet and he can supply. He is your strength. He is your healing. He is your deliverance. He is your great I am. That is present tense, y'all. I am. Not I was. He, he is now. He's a very relevant God. He never changes. I am here. I am. He is everything that you will ever need in, in your life. He is God. He is God. Get that in your spirits. He is God. And he loves you. He wants you with him. He is your everything. And he will supply every need and in every situation. You know... God does not ever show up empty. And if you know, I love that. I hold on to this in my life, you know, brethren. Never. I got to thinking about it. There's so many of us here with so many needs. There's not one person here that has only one need. In the world, huh? And in here, you do only have one need. You need to be protected. The knees hurting, you need to be healed. You're out of a job, you need employment. All of that is one person I'm talking about still. Yeah? You have so many other needs. Just one person. One person might have, what, 50 needs? It depends. It has so many things. Anxiety, depression. So many things that come upon us as human beings. And every one of us have a lot of needs. And we come and we call God. We say, God, here I am. This is what I need. And as time progresses, the needs get worse. What used to satisfy the people of long ago can't satisfy me today. Because I live in a different era. I live in a different time. So the things that worked long ago ain't going to stand up for me today. So things got harder. And you know what? When I come before God, my brother, and I present this need... God never, oh my God, things have changed so much. How am I going to handle this one? He never scratches his head. He always shows up with the answer. And you know why? Because he is the answer, people. Jesus is the answer to everything that we need. Jesus had a plan. God the Father had a plan. And that plan is still working today. He had that plan and change because he did not change. Guess who changed? Yeah, I'm not looking like how I was 15 years ago. Yeah, I would like to look like that. Yeah, but I change. Things change. But this is what is amazing about God. He does not change. Oh, get this in your spirit. God was from the beginning. Yeah. And he had a plan then. He not changing, but he's so very relevant today. 
What a God! Give him a hallelujah! He ain't changed, you know? He did not change. He said, I am your God, and I what? I change yet not. So what I had for you in the beginning, I still have it. What I wanted for you in the beginning, I still want it. Guess who changed? Guess who moved? Guess who became indifferent? All of us. But he had a plan to buy us back, and that plan still works today. You know, my brethren, God did not say that we would not have problems, you know. As long as we are in this world, we're going to have problems. It goes without saying. He did not say that we would not have hardships. He did not say that we would, be, we would not be in pain. He did not say that the journey would be smooth. Not at all. But he did say that I will be with you every step of the way. Hallelujah. <clears throat> oh, hallelujah. This blesses my heart so much. Lord, I thank you. I thank you so much for Jesus. Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, our King, you change it not. Your love is still unconditional, and you're still reaching out to us this morning. I love you. Let's turn in our Bibles to Isaiah 43 and 1. I will read in the interest of time. But now, thus said the Lord that created you, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, Hi. <laughs> Woo, fear is gripping our hearts, isn't it? It grips my heart sometimes. I ain't no lie. I can't stand on this holy podium and pretend that I am perfect. I ain't perfect. Fear grips my heart at times. And I have to remind myself of the word of God. I have to remind myself of what he says. Else, the wicked one's going to devour me. He's going to destroy me. So I have to know who I am in Christ Jesus. He says, "For fear not, for I have redeemed you. Yes, I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you go through the waters and the rough waters, and we're going through plenty of waters these days, so many of our brethren are flooded out, losing everything. They're going through the physical, the actual, literal waters, he said, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not. They will not overflow thee. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Neither shall the flames kindle thee. Hot or cold, brethren, wet or dry, whatever the climate, whatever the condition, Whatever the problem, whatever the situation, whatever the temptation, whatever the failure. And we do fear God sometimes. He says, I will be with you. And I was thinking about that. <clears throat> I know that the holy God, he cannot dwell where there is sin. And there are times that we walk out of the paling of grace. But I still hold to what Jesus said. I still hold on to that. Because if he says that he is never going to leave you, even in that state, I believe Jesus is there. And you know how I believe he's there? Because he says he's never going to leave us. He's there. And he's saying, Shari, my child, that's not the road. He is there. I mean, Jesus may not be prominent in my heart. He may not be my Lord and my Savior at that time, but he says he's not going to leave me, and I'm holding on to that. But it's a serious place to be in. Don't take that as a freedom to sin, Jesus being with you. Hear what Jesus is doing. He's saying, this is not the path I have created for you. Listen to my voice, my child. 
This road seems nice. It's glittering and it's shining. But the end thereof is death. You could only see thus far. But I'm seeing the end of the road that you are traveling now. And it's not a good one. I want you to come back. So Jesus never ever leaves us. We are the one that leaves Jesus. And I am friends. I am saying things to you. Nothing that I have not done myself. It will be hypocritical of me to stand here and preach to you when I myself don't do it. But I acknowledge Jesus as my Lord and Savior a very long time ago. I saw Jesus raised my mother from the dead. And I have stood and held on to Jesus. My mother is still alive today because God promised life. And she gave her heart to the Lord. I saw what she did, giving her heart to the Lord. I saw what the Jesus, which I didn't know before. You know how I knew Jesus? And this is no condemnation to anyone. I knew, I knew Jesus um, as a statue of stone in the Catholic Church. I'm honest. That is how, who I know Jesus was. And I went to a Catholic school, and I would kneel. <clears throat> when we go, you know, it's the ritual, I have to do it, I'm a kid, and that's all that I knew of Jesus, but I saw Jesus in demonstration in my own mother's life, I saw where he changed her and he saved her, and she's holding on to him uh, to this uh, very day. I need Jesus, just as I'm saying that you need Jesus, friends, I need Jesus in the morning, I need him in the evening. I need him when I leave my house. I need him when I'm coming in. I need him to supply the peace that I need every day to go through this life. Uh, and I need him all the time. And you see, because I've given my life to Jesus, there's someone that's after me. Because I gave up his old ways. Now, what is this? What? What, what I used to do as a child, I was so terrible. Yeah? Yes, it was terrible, you know, even then, because I worship idols. I did not worship the true and living God. Jesus rescued me from that. Yeah, he made a change in my life. So the enemy of my soul that had me doing these things, he's not pleased. He will do anything that he wants to get me, all right? But, you know, Jesus always shows up with the answer. He always shows up in time. Jesus always come true. Jesus set me free and he can set you free today. You know, sometimes we ask God and we pray and we are waiting and, and the answer doesn't come. And that's the wicked one trying to discredit Jesus, you know, trying to say, well, look, you're praying, nothing is happening. Jesus isn't coming true. But you just Hold on. You just hold on. Don't let your faith waver. If God promises it, he's going to bring it to pass. The Bible says that his promises are yea and they are amen. You could take it to the bank. It will not be counterfeit. It is real. Jesus always shows up in the answer. And here's something even better. You might be praying and you expecting this particular answer, but you know that's not the answer that you get. And you're vexed. You're vexed, but it's not what it is no I pray for. But God did answer the prayer. And you know, just a little while after, you, you, you say, well, all right, wherever. And when you real analyze it, you know it was a better answer. You know it was greater than what you were conceiving. That's the God that we serve. He's a God that has a plan for every single one of your lives. And all you have to do is trust him. Let's, I'm coming down to the end here. Let's turn to Psalms 18 and 30. And it says, as for God, his way is perfect. I'm going to say that again. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord, it is Ah, oh boy, it has tried and it did not fail. It done, it did not ever 
fulfilled. It's proven. The word of God is proven to be true. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. Nahum 1 and 7 says, the Lord is God. Good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. You may be going through a trial right now, but remember, God has a plan for you. Just trust him. Maybe you are feeling the financial crunch, and a lot of us are doing uh, are feeling that because the economies are shrinking, and my, my people, they're going to continue to shrink. In fact, um, it is predicted in the next few months, um, yeah, in the great U.S. of A. And you know what they say? We get it. Yeah, yeah. We, it's, it's coming. So if you think it's hard now, it's going to get hard Oh, hide yourself in Jesus. Hide yourself in the one that have the answer. All the economists, the great minds of this world, they're trying really hard, you know. Trust me, they are. Because we cannot continue the way that we're going. So they're trying hard to come up with the answer. But they cannot. Oh, my God. I'm sorry if you're listening to me, economists. I appreciate all that you do, but you don't have the answer. If Jesus is not your Lord, if the answer is not in you, you will not have the answer. So they don't have the answer. Jesus is. My people, please believe it this morning. Jesus is the only answer. The word of God tells us this. If you are dealing with sicknesses, remember that he has a plan for your healing. And that plan did not fall through. That plan still remains. It holds steady this morning. Maybe you're dealing with a failing relationship. Remember that he has a plan to help you through that too. He said there's nothing that you would want that I cannot help you. You know, sometimes we want the wrong things to wear. I had to put that in there. Sometimes what we want is wrong. You know, Jesus also helps us through that by giving us the right thing. But it's up to us to accept it or not. Because we know when we pray, this is what I want. That is the answer I'm looking for. But he sends better. He always sends better. And if you trust the Lord, you will see that it really was better for you. Now, maybe you are dealing with depression and anxiety. And I can see that so much in people. You look at the people on the streets and they are blank. It's because they're so tormented by the wicked one. The cares of this life is real, you know, people. Those of you that are on the house stop, don't come down. And those of you that are set, uh, have set your hearts and eyes on the Lord, don't come down from that position. Because it's a time for us to indeed hide ourselves in the master. So he had a plan for all of that. <clears throat> he had a plan for your finances. He had a plan for your sicknesses. He had a plan for your relationship. He had a plan for the depression and the anxiety that you feel. But most importantly, most importantly, brethren, if you didn't get anything at all, my friends on Facebook, if you didn't get anything at all, most importantly, he had a plan for Jesus in your life. You need Jesus. Not if you want him, you know. I'm saying boldly this morning, everybody here and those of you on Facebook and those that will hear it after, you need Jesus. You do. You do. You need Jesus. You need to hide yourself in Jesus in this gross darkness, especially now that we are facing. You need Jesus. For Jeremiah 29 and 11 tells us, for I know, I'm ending with this. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for your well-being and not for calamity. Yeah. Amen. Your future is bright. 
Your future will be bright, but it's only going to be bright in Jesus. Because Jesus is the way maker. He has a plan for every single one of your lives. And so I'm asking you to give Jesus the opportunity. I don't say chance. Because the way I understand giving a chance is take a chance in my raffle and I don't ever win anything. There's a chance. Because you're not sure to win. You're not sure to win. So don't give him a chance. Give him the opportunity to be your Lord. Give him the opportunity to be who he said he will be. Don't try him. It's not a choice. I real being bold this morning. Don't try. Don't try Jesus to see if he will work. He works. He works. And he is the one that you want. He is the one that you need. So give him an opportunity. As I end, I want to speak to my backsliding Christian folks. It's real. The world that we live in is real. And sometimes the hardships of life can crowd your minds, can cover your eyes so that you don't see. And you begin to dip in your, in your spiritual life. I'm talking to you first. Jesus is saying to you, come back to me. Yeah? Jesus is saying, come back to me. Remember. Remember the times that we had together. Remember when you didn't have a care in this world. Remember when it was a joy to get up in the morning and say, Jesus, thank you. Remember when it, when it was a joy to get up and go through the day. Remember when it was a joy to tell somebody, Jesus, love you, sister. Jesus, love you, brother. Come back to those days. Jesus is saying, come back. I am your salvation. To the Christian that is stagnant, he don't like where you are either. He's saying, come higher. Come up higher to where I am. There is so much more for you to experience. There's so much more of me that you need to know about. So come up. And to those of you who do not know him at all as your Lord and your Savior, he's saying to you this morning, come to me. Come to me, for I am the answer. Come to me. I'm going to lead you. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you my full uh, salvation. There's nothing that you're going to need that I am, the great I am, uh, that I will not be able to do for you. These are not empty words this morning, brethren, but these, are th these words are life. They came right out of the scripture. It is life. It is life. It is life. And as we heard our bishop taught us last week, attend. Attend unto my words. Not my words. Eh? I'm talking about the, the, the Bible. The words of the Lord. Jesus is saying, attend unto my words. Come and experience me and see what I can do in your life. Let us pray. Almighty God, I thank you for the opportunity to share Jesus with your people. Hallelujah. You said to preach Jesus and him crucified. And I've done nothing else, Lord, but teach your people about you, Jesus. And what you are able to do. And the call, oh God, that you are given today. The call of repentance. You said that him that comes to me, you will in no wise cast out. We may be the worst, oh God. Or we may not be as bad. But you said whoever and whenever we come to you, you will not cast us away today. So I'm praying, oh God, that your word will move upon the hearts of your spirit will move upon the hearts of your people today, that they will receive you, Jesus, as their Lord and their Savior. They will confess their sins, O oh God, and you will wash them with your precious blood. In the name of Jesus, I just commit them before you. Brethren, I just want you to, to just say this prayer after me. Those of you that are here, those of you that are downstairs, and my beautiful friends on Facebook, let's pray together. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your words this morning. And thank you for your love. 
You are offering me an amazing love. You are offering me the answer. And this morning, Lord, I open my heart and I receive Jesus as my Savior. I ask you, Father, to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to wash me with your blood. And I ask you that I will belong to you today. So thank you for accepting me, Lord, as I accept Jesus as my Savior. And help me now to read your word, to pray, to grow in you, and to be who I'm supposed to be. So I surrender my all into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give Jesus a mighty hand of praise this morning. Oh, he's an amazing God and he loves you. Come to him today. Come to him. Let's put our hands together forever and share you this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Reverend Shari, we want to thank you for giving such a good account of the word of God. For ministering the word of the Lord unto us. And brethren, you know, life really is not a game. Life is not a game. It's life that we live. This is not multiple choice. Hmm. With four options and you choose one. Yeah. Jesus is not an option. Yeah. As we heard this morning. Jesus is the only solution Amen. to the problem of sin. Amen. If we have a sin in our hearts, we'll never see the kingdom of God. If we live a sinful life, we'll end up in a Christless eternity. But I trust this morning that we would have heard what our minister was saying unto us. God has a plan. Yeah. He has a plan that is well-founded and established. A good plan for our lives. We have to make the first step. When he knocks on the door of our hearts, as he said he does in Revelation, we have to open our hearts unto him. And I trust today that we would have taken that opportunity to open our hearts unto him, that he would come in. He says, if any man hear my voice, you've heard his voice, and open that door, that he will come into him, not on the outside, he will come into him. And as our minister said, he's not coming empty-handed. He's coming loaded with all of his goodness and all of his grace. He says, I will come into him and I will sup with him and him with me. We have a good deal with Christ. We have the best deal we could have with Christ. And at the end of our days, we go to be with him on the other side of heaven. And we spend eternity with him if we make that first step. And I pray today that we have taken that step. And if today by chance you heard but you didn't respond, I want to ask you again to carefully consider. And don't let these words slip out of uh, your heart. Don't let them slip out of your hearing. But before time changes into an eternity, make Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior. There is a heaven to gain. And there is a hell to shun. We decide while we are in the land of the living and we thank God for that opportunity. You don't know, my dear friends, this may very well be the last time that you would have heard the gospel. And I pray that we leave this house here today with our hearts made right and ready before God. Thank you again, Reverend Shari. Thank you, Reverend Camille, for putting together the service as you always do on evangelism. The Lord be praised. At this time, we are getting ready to give of our substance unto the Lord. Sister Grace, could I ask you to stand and ask the Lord's blessing on our offering as we get ready to give.
Amen. Hallelujah. Let's all stand this morning as we do. Oh, let's just worship him this morning. Let's rejoice. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my song, for you are good, you're good. Oh. Good, you're good. Let the king of my heart, let the king be the mountain where I run, the mountain where the fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my song. For you are. Good, you're good. Oh, you are good. You're good. Oh, let's sing the second verse. Let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins. Verse one more time, let the king, let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in my waves. Oh, he is my soul. Let the king. Oh, 
Come on. You never stop, you never stop, stop working. 
a very pleasant Sunday morning. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Michael, we're glad to have you again this morning. I don't know if uh, Bernard or Bernard is related to you. Your dad? Welcome. Nice to have both of you, father and son. Bernard and Michael Rodriguez, nice to have you all this morning. Always nice to have friends. Toy, um, brother, brother Toy, brother, <laughs> brother Ram Narayan, brother Ram Narayan Maharaj, very good friend. Nice to have you in the house of the Lord. Hesta Morales. Hesta Morales. Nice to have you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Nice to have you in the house of the Lord this morning. Thank you all. Thank you to my dear wife. Outstanding word. Good word. Amen. And thank you to Reverend Camille for... Um, organizing the service this morning. Now, this is really her Sunday, Evangelism Sunday. He's our evangelism director. So she puts this together. Thank you. Thank you very much. Everybody 
Nice to have you in God's house today. Listen, um, we have a not child but children dedication this morning. Um, this young man that is standing to the back of the church there. Stephen, I would have dedicated him as a baby as well. And today he has brought his own baby to be dedicated to the Lord. And you know, it's always a joy and a privilege to do that, to dedicate little ones to the Lord. So I'll ask you, um, Stephen, to come bring the baby and uh, the mom and anybody else who is coming to stand with you all. And then, and then, um, Emmanuel, Emmanuel and Nicole, something fell there, um, Emmanuel. You, I'm not sure if it's both children you're dedicating, but I want to invite you to come. 